Lang slag. How's this injury healing? You know what, we cut the one, so it's got an abscess on the, the palm. As you see, I don't want to touch because it's very, very sensitive at the moment. And I think that also makes it a little bit grumpy at the moment. So I, hopefully by tomorrow it will pop. And, but it takes time, you know, I can't it's like a pimple, you know, that abscess has to be ripened to pop out and to be cleaned itself. So I tried to clean it early this morning, but um, it wasn't successful. No, but further on, you know, it's got basic things. Olami has kind of uh, grown onto um, a little babini. And yesterday, she didn't want to follow us on the little walk that we had, kind of to investigate. We went to the homestead area. And so for the past three days, we've been walking. So today was the first day that uh, Lamy came on her own. I thought I'm just leaving her. Sorry, she's I'm walking with, and then she returns. And then she just makes yeah, nah, the whole time until we're back. But today she followed. So she kind of, I think, uh, grows on Pabini, and Pabini grows onto her. Uh, his social skills are not at all good. So he will meet the others, and they will spend time with him, and then he goes to sleep. You'll see a lot on that um, over the next week or two once I share it with social media. When, you'll be, when will you be confident he's out of danger concerning his health? You know what? 
that. Um, I always say you work the first week to every 24 hours, so we've been past that, and you work towards two weeks. We're now in the time that the let's get to the, the first month. Now with elephants, they are extremely delicate. You think you um, the right path and everything is working. So touch wood, it's going well. But it's it's still early days and you know, you know if you look at stats, it's about 50-50% chance for you to survival. You need to take that into account. How many hours per day does he sleep? So approximately seven to nine hours at this stage. Some days he sleeps less. And, you know, um, it's also extremely hot. Uh, so he's a little bit more than, you know, usual. But the other day he really slept like four, four and a half hours. Um, no, so it, it depends. But I want to say it's about seven to nine hours average that I've seen. When will he be introduced to the herd? Uh, we start with the process, you know, but it's also a, a slow process. Uh, but only 2024, it will be a full introduction. At this stage, you know, he needs to, to learn all of the carers. So the first batch of carers only went on leave after his first week, and that was very traumatic to him. Uh, so, Stavros and Herman left today. Um, we will get to live a start from tomorrow. So that's a new individual. So, you know, basically your first few weeks is, um, you know, just traumatic for you to get to learn all the, the carers, um, you know, around you. That will be part of his life. And also his surroundings. You know, I don't want to take him out for a day out with the elephants if he's not comfortable where he really is. Does he seem aware of the other elephants? Yes, he definitely is aware. You know, he goes to them and he smells. Um, but I don't know if it's maybe trauma as well, that kind of halfway through the process, he goes to the reeds and he sleeps. So I think you know, it's, it's also it's part of stress and how you relate to handling stress. Uh, I think one of these ways is to go off and sleep under the bush. Difference between rhino and elephant milk? <laughs> There's a huge difference. So rhino milk, um, very easy. You work on skin fill, protection, which is like a probably uh, flora. Um, water and you can also use shit shakes, it's especially just with your probiotics. Uh, elephant milk, so I gather he's now on five months. So from five months, you use actually a very high levels of fat, high levels of protein, lactose zero. Before that, it's actually up to five months, it's a very high uh, lactose. Uh, so yes, it changes extremely. I think that's why we kind of battled. Um, you can see it's a little bit uh, bloated at the moment. So hopefully we can get that right. Uh, the phosphor... What's that word? The phosphor... The particular amount, the other the ingredients versus your amount of water um, I'm working on to see which amount of fat, protein, and um, baby milk powder um, is the right ingredient for you. Of course, protein is not it's very tasty, oil is not tasty. So your milk formula uh, is the tasty one, which you love. But that is also a lot of carbohydrates, which is a no go for you. Um, so, getting a balance between what is tasty enough for them versus what is the right ingredients is where we are at the moment. Does he snore? <laughs> yes, he does snore with time. And then he also brings in 
and very deep, and he holds it. And all of a sudden, right in between, you actually want to say, hey, are you green? Are you still alive? But yes, yes. Um, he also, it took a little bit longer with a baby, so you can touch his trunk, and you know, now I can just touch all over, but he's very sensitive on his stomach, and um, it doesn't allow people, you know, a lot of vigorous you know, us to, to touch his stomach. But Trump is now fine with um, all of us, and then you start touching them, and um, his legs. So it's all, you know, they are actually uh, um, very tactile, and I think they love language in this touch. But they must also allow you to get there. So it's kind of trust before touch. Which female will be chosen for his adoptive mother? It's a little bit debatable. I know Toffee will take you in. Uh, Limpopo is, you know, she's making a good show. Um, and she's actually kind of getting high in the high ranking. But if you are look in the future of reintegration, I think I should choose Yuki. Because Mindy with uh, baby bulls and the male orphans that come in might be a better choice than having the top wing with all the females. But he also went um, through the fence Kalisa and he also has the scent of him on me. And it will be interesting once they meet. And I think I'm in between how to to see the reaction. Does Fabini like Lummy? Fabini doesn't like Lummy at all. The first few nights we actually separated them, sleeping, you know, that uh, mommy didn't sleep in the stall. Um, and mommy kind of, you know, chose to stay out of his way, she would do her own thing. But the last day or two, I think she's kind of, kind of growing onto him, and it's like on the walk, she followed today, it was her own choice to follow. And uh, he doesn't chase her anymore. But I think Lummi is also getting older and you know, she's kind of like, do I really have to do this? Um, so I definitely think I need to get a, a sheep that she can teach that sheep to look after the orphans in the future. And also for her then to have a little mate. Good, that's a whole part. With this fan, we will have to get you a Micah Dean in the future. I'm sorry, sorry. I will have all the, the social media team tomorrow to jump onto the questions and answer that. And I actually do have these things. I must just remember them, to find them. But the elephants also, they don't like the smell of the rhinos, so whenever I go to the rhinos, I had to, to go for a shower, put on new clothes before coming to them, because it really upsets them uh, to have a, a rhino smell on me and don't like it. Is he still still loose or more solid now? Hmm. He's um, still sort of very loose um, until late last night, and it's Seven o'clock, I called um, one of the, the students to help me, and I threw out all the dry mixes. We started all over, and you know, since then the uh, soils were much better. It's still a little bit loose, however, he still he, he now started to be bloated. So it's like okay, you've got loose stools, your stomach is now okay, but you have. Uh, a bit of bloatedness, and the bloatedness is also not comfortable. But his energy levels are much better than what it was. Uh, so I think we are the winning part, and I think with Dr. Ricky, he really supports me, and I can phone him any time of the day, and just bounce back ideas on things that I've seen, um, and you know, 
kind of how to, to go about. There are also previous experience which science tells me I need to do this, but experience told me to go that way. And you know, it's kind of total opposites, and you need to find the balance uh, right in between that. Since he's male, will the other males accept him in the herd? You know what, the, the males will, the bulls will definitely accept him. Remember, he's a baby. Uh, they accept all babies that come see him. And, um, yeah, I think later on, you know, it will be like on high ranking levels. But at this stage, you know, they definitely, you know, accept him. totally different than Tanisa, although they come from the, all the southern, side, the southern part of the uh, Kruger, it's like two different um, kind of, uh, I want to say, I don't know, they're totally different. You know, he's got very high cheekbones, his eyes are a little bit lower, Actually, when you see him, he's got the most beautiful red tongue. So with Tanisa being, you know, pink, I think we didn't realize that she's got like a, a pink tongue as well. But with him being gray, you can see his pink tongue, and then like this when he sleeps. It's actually so cute. He's got this beautiful pink tongue. Sorry, I'm going to. Oh, that's my hand. I want to. Oh no, you can't see it. Oh, there you go. Look at that. And look at his tusks. His tusks are very close, but I mean, it's also going to be a long time for him to get it out. Look at his little trunk. I think that's look at that now he's like listening but he just wants to get your smell and then it goes back and then it relaxes um, he's very much on on scent um, and you must not surprise him when he sleeps and when he wakes up that it's it's really for him a surprise and he'll get a, a shock um, and then it'll be very defensive. So, um, you know, kind of when he sleeps, you must either stay with him and, you know, you shouldn't wake him or, you know, make noise that when, once he sleeps. The best is I said also the other day to reply, you know, it's like, come and you, you talk to him, even if he sleeps, that he hears your voice and he kind of knows you know where you are um, but don't surprise him because then he's like extremely um, I can say um, oh, he's got a bit of a you know it's very feisty thing you can also see sorry that's the, the camera on up look at his eyes um, it's kind of in a way much smaller than Kanisa and his cheekbones, how deep it is. Um, but that will also come with time. And then of course his ears. He's got the perfect ears, but he also keeps his one ear a lot of the times like out. Now he'll keep it like that, look at that where they usually will flap it back but he will keep it a lot like that 
Um, I don't know if it's because of the heat and if, if that will be something that he will do um, always. You know, if you can look at his ploikies, uh, what's ploikies in English? Um, uh, those things. He frowns, like not a frown, but it's, you know. Um, is there some of Canisa's cream dot in the in the um, fridge? Don't you want to give me get me that um, cream of Canisa in the fridge? I just want to put here as well. She's got like you know little areas where we had some. Um, Scorches and uh, no, scorches is the wrong word, but it's uh, down here. I also felt something. And if I can show you, you know, this bump, look at that. I hope this will pop uh, because I've got a marketing trip that come in, comes up and I can't leave him. He's got the cutest feet. Look at his little feet. Um, actually, looks like he's got. Quickly, want to put some ointment on there. Thanks, reply. So reply brought me this. Ointment. Um, I've used this on Kanisa as well. See, you can see that it's very sensitive. I only put that cream on. goes to Lamy. I think we'll just chase her off sleeping spot. It's 
the reply is got a message. As you can see, he's also is sensitive about his legs. No replies there. So it's really very sensitive still. Um, so for everyone, you know, it's like, and you can actually see what I've noticed about him. You see, this is hot, um, wet. So in his sleep, he actually um, urinates. And I don't know why he does that. That's kind of, I've, you know, not experienced that before. I don't know if he's too lazy to get up and take a, a you know, a toilet break or what it is. There's actually nothing wrong with his nose. I've just put the extra cream on there. So that's kind of the first thing, you know, you need to let them trust you to stroke their trunk. And then it goes further, you know, that you take there, you'll see his trunk, you know, coming up. Um, so then you stroke the legs. So that's all of getting um he's a uh, goodwill and buy into you to trust you so people also always ask me oh, does Kanisa know that you filming her uh, maybe she did get used to like the camera or the phone close to her um, he still will take it away you see I've got my horses close by I can answer some questions. Uh, no, so the caretakers um, that with the elephants are only um, are based with the, the elephants. The reason for that is that, you know, elephants um, are, um, their lifespan is for 60 years. So it's really, it's not only a job, it's a career. Because, you know, like this little one will definitely outlive me. And that's what I say to them. So everything that we need um, to, to put in is, you know, for the longer term. So there he goes back to sleep. Um, and with the, the elephants, they... In, uh, integration back into the wild is much easier than with elephants. You no, know, elephants need other elephants, they need a family. So, no, I don't share them just because elephants are much more tricky than rhinos. Um, rhinos, I mean, I love rhinos, but if you compare them, um, the, the Ellis are just much more complicated and it's um, it's really dedication uh, for people. I usually say the elephants choose you, you don't choose the elephants. Oh, and if there's any questions, I've got my glasses on. Um, yes, I'm so, so sorry. I think also our signal. I actually thought I need to get, I want to call it Sputnik. It's not Sputnik, um, Starlink. But you know what? Starlink is not available in South Africa. So I either need uh, able to connect, it said not able to connect and then it was connecting again. But one day 
soon, hopefully, we'll be able to get Starlink. I thought of ways um, that, you know, of ways that we are able to get Starlink. So I think if we've got that, we'll be able, you know, even for us, you know, in the anti-poaching side, it's impossible to connect. So we're back on, on radios, you know, your two, two-way communication where you've got radios to connect because, uh, yeah, where we are, really Wi-Fi is so bad. So sorry about, you know, for those who could not hear me, um, it's not, you know, um, on the, that I'm not one to ask you. Yes, but I'm not sure why, you know, I know exactly why Starling is not allowed here. Um, we need to do a lot of bribery before Starling will get here. But I think if I've, even I have, you know, get it internationally and, you know, I'll be able to roam even, that's a possibility. Okay, I'm glad I see that, um, oh yes, and then tomorrow we start with Giving Tuesday on Global Giving. And we'll start also with a campaign for Pabeni, because, you know, that's another four years uh, plus a year of winning for this little one that's lying ahead. And I really try to um, also keep you posted. I'd love you to also get to know this little boy. A boy and a girl's, you know, different as well. You've got the same families and the family members, your children are so different and they're both um, different. Yeah, so tomorrow is Giving Tuesday. So we're running a campaign on global giving for those who would like to join us. We'll be extremely grateful, grateful, sorry, grateful. Um, for that. Um, okay, so Kanisa's been, oh, Kanisa, sorry, I do that every now and then. Babeni, we took out into the bigger area already, yes. Uh, she had a mud bath. She loves the mud bath because we uh, put a lot of water in there. And so it's kind of a swimming pool for her. Plus, um, uh, you know, a mud bath, plus she's drinking that water. She, he, sorry, he. Um, yeah, so he actually really enjoys that. And the other area that he enjoys is where the reeds are. Um, he's also eating a lot, but, you know, taking into account that both Kanisa and also Fenya could not eat. So he can eat, he can chew, um... Yeah, it's amazing. Um, I, I, you know what? I'm not sure if I won't be able to go live tomorrow. I also have, a, unfortunately, a marketing, marketing trip lying ahead of me. Um, so I think for the next week, I'll be unable to go live. But um, I'll go live again. But I also, you know... Um, will keep you updated on his progress. I've got the, the carers here. I mean, they sent me throughout the night also some pictures of his dung, um, when he's sleeping. So I've got everything here um, of, you know, what's going on here. Yeah, you know what? I was actually looking, you know, if you go back to Fenya, I had um, this afternoon when we walked. So the tree for Fenya, to remember her, is actually doing so great. I must do an update on that as well. Yes, he reminds me a lot of Fenya. Also, his high cheekbones. Uh, there's so much that um, that reminds me of Fenya. Of his uh, kind of even his skin. You know, if you look at that, his eyes. Um, you know, this. Yo, know, there's so much. Um, Look at his little feet and his tail. Let me show you his tail. They're so sensitive about their tails, but yeah. Um, look at his little feet. And remember, they've got five um, nails on their front feet and then only four nails at their hind legs. 
you can actually see this is now a big one the ones on the inside these toenails are very tiny they are about there I'll see if he moves his leg um, yes I will give not me I will ask the people that helps me in the office to give you the link for tomorrow uh, for global giving um, because I, you know, I'll need to get back on the road um, you know, but he's, he's really he's actually he's extremely clever you know if I just you know, look at his uh, personality he's also very um, uh, what do you call it um, with his feet you know he can um, walk like tick 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 he's very fine on um, where he steps um, you know also for his age and his trunk gee whiz what he can do with his trunk and then also the amount of what he eats I don't know if it's only a boy because boys are eating a lot more than um, than girls but yeah gee whiz he um, eats quite a lot but it's also extremely good thing uh, they need a lot of protein and getting in good protein is a little bit of a, an issue um, you know at this stage the the milk content uh, the milk content high protein high fat very low carb uh, carbohydrates lactose zero so just to get that kind of right but once i get that formula right it will be so much easier for future babies and then we just need to get kind of the weight uh, versus the age i would like you know rather to link that to to weight because once you get these babies in i don't know the, the age you don't know their birth date um you know but you know um so i assume i thought he's like four months he's been with us now for two weeks but i think he's going like on five months so i'm working on a five month old baby um formula so that's kind of you know what what i do think uh, yeah so Fendia passed away she was an older um, calf that came in and she was severely injured and uh, she was caught in a snare and it, it was very sad to see her um, her whole you know trachy over there was exposed uh, we had to clean that and you know that was very very traumatic i think for for everyone and sad to see what snares can do um to elephants and wildlife as such um but your fenya fenya has a lot on our um uh, sneering campaigns which we run in the community and you know just to to to, to show people um, and especially children what these snares can do because you don't want the kids to go in into that direction as a job or a career you know just because um, that's how they grew up but to teach them how we need to pursue, pursue, uh, preserve sorry preserve wildlife because that's our natural capital and I mean she was um, they are special they are really so special and you know, um, but you know on the other hand you know we sit with such population growth of humans and people are hungry I try to understand that and put myself in their, sh their shoes and how can we help people to get jobs and um, with this one, you know, no sneering was involved. Kanisa had really huge snare wounds and um, it's actually great to have a golf with no snare wounds. Yeah, you know what? Uh, 
I went to feed Kanisa's milk bottles and she's such a lovely Ellie um, and you know we the two of us uh, Babini, myself, Babini and all the carers still need to, to build up that bond that, you know, we have similar to Kanisa to trust us that, that well. But what is so amazing of Kanisa is that she integrated into the herd so well that in the future, uh, I know she will be fine. You know, even if she's got this amazing personality and we both love each other to, to bits. Um, I know she will be um, well away wherever she, she ends up. And this one, we still need to, to grow. And then of course, you know, we've got Lummy. Look at Lummy, oh sorry. Lummy, hello Lummy, hello. So Lummy, our surrogate mother of Kanisa, but also she's been with the rhinos. She's getting older, and I need to get a, a follow-up for her that she can teach them. And then also a friend for little Lummy, but she's amazing. She's a little bit of a photo bobber. She loves attention, but she's freaking amazing, and she's really straight going to heaven. I do think she, not sure if she's a, a rhino or an elephant. She thinks she's grey. I don't think she does. She's got a, a brown head. Look at her. <laughs> she loves that we actually bump like heads and get a scratch like this. That's her favourite. Um, and she had a nice shave for this heat. <clears throat> yeah. So that's our lummy. Um, so we use a sheep as a, a kind of a companion animal. Um, so for the when the guys go out, they make a milk bottle. This you know another little bean um, with uh, Barbini at this stage or with the animal that's around, and you know also helping to feed. Now, I can try as much, you know, to eat grass like an elephant, but I can't. Um, but just, you know, out in the bush, walking, feeding on things, and he will follow, or Kanisa would follow. So that's really very um, valuable uh, for us raising the wildlife and your very, very special little girl. or maybe not a little girl anymore. I think Lamy is now a mature adult woman. Oh, look at my nails, sorry. I already, because I gave the, um, I did a sales call uh, and I had this beautiful red nails, but it's not working in the bush at all. So I ruined everything when I went to pick up mud for the rhinos and I gave the rhinos a mud bath and yeah so that was that was where the nails went out the back door <laughs> yeah you know what Mupani and this little one reminds me a lot of um of each other uh oh, Mupa you know had the same you know that typically kind of boyish that oh no you know if you you call them no they must come on their own time whenever they um, um, you're already uh, well tatina means actually thank you so that is the shauna for thank you and um, and then also good evening in, in Shona is Maneru. You can see either Maneru Akanaka, um, and then in the mornings it's Mangonani Akanaka. Um, Sutu is Dumela, Dumalang, um, and how are you? You say uh, Ukai or Lekai if it's more than one. Um, and then Shangan is Apshen for good morning. And yes, then in Afrikaans, it's Goeiemore. 
Uh, so that's not always an, uh, an easy way, way to, to say good morning. She was. I just read now here on the on the um, that three elephants collapsed in the Kruger National Park. Listen, this heat is extremely bad. Um, it's uh, the other uh, um, yesterday when I was with Babini out. You know, I had the umbrella over her, of over him. I was kind of. I didn't spray anything for my um, sun. Um, you know, on, on my skin. You know, that was kind of fun. But inside me, it felt like I was actually like cooking. Uh, my, you know, like meat cooking. It was like, it was so bad. It was so hot. Um, so yes, it's extremely important to also uh, give them access to water, take them down there also for mud baths. Um, yeah, just to... Um, cool down as well and then also just behind the ears you know that is because there's like no breeze even um, yeah so for Babini we cool him down and he actually knows now with his little mud bath um, oh no I felt like I was like in a cooker you know and I, really I want to say inside myself I was like <laughs> cooking um, I thought I'm going to be like a roast chicken. But it's, it's actually sad because whenever you, you know, wherever you are, if I look at, um, I've actually visited a, a zoo in Alborg in uh, Denmark the other day, and there the temperatures are also much higher than what it used to be. And you know, all over the world, I mean, we are really sitting with, um, you know, much high heat. And I think it is something to be concerned about and, you know, how to address that. So, okay, I just wanted to actually, you know, show you a little bit more of Babini. Sometimes during the day, um, I'll try maybe to to do a live that you can see where he is out um, in the bigger area. I am going to do a marketing trip for the lodge um, and stuff for a, for a week. Um, but if I need, I will come back because when I heard when they phoned me about Babini, I was also on a on a on a trip um, and I visited that too and I did a, um, a congress which I attended, but I just jumped onto the plane and I came back. So if there's need, I'll definitely come back and return because there's, you know, some things in life that, you know, more worthwhile than, than anything else. Okay, I'll definitely, thanks for that. I'll definitely have a look at elephants collapse during um, the heat. And I promise you, it was, and you know, also in the Kruger, they, they close so many water holes to attract water more to to, diff, uh, to one central point. And I know my grandfather used to say, my father then, you know, the more water you have, the more water points you have is much better. And that's the one thing that, you know, I've got this two water holes. So the one, is priority and then the second one I'll do hopefully the year ahead but that's for the elephants to have that access to water when they they browse and they're out on the reserve it is extremely important um, are the water points but um, thank you for everyone that you are know, tuned in I just wanted to kind of introduce you to Babini keep you updated um, it's you know it's not kind of out of the hoots but it is going okay with him We're a little bit up and down but at the moment we just need to work on this little bloatedness and then hopefully that abscess will burst uh, tomorrow before i leave otherwise i'll have tiger in to assist and help um 
but yeah, I'll keep you posted definitely, and yeah, I'll send you and also keep you like um updated on YouTube, and yeah, just have a look out for, for all our little walks out around and about our swims in his little mud bath. It's quite fun, and just to see it out of the perspective of this little new eyes. Um, I, I still learn every day, every minute, uh, spending time with the elephants. They are extremely clever. So, yeah, please yeah, follow them and enjoy it because I think it, it actually gives us all of us purpose in life, you know, to see it from, from their eyes. And, yeah, it's really what, what I see, I share with you. I uh, apologize, you know, for it's not a BBC, it's not Nat Geo, it's, it's just little Ellie's and that we introduce with the, the other Ellie's. So just enjoy. And yes, so Kanisa kind of met him um, in the mornings, I, um, but I'll, I'll share with you on YouTube some of the videos. Um, from tomorrow, I'm going to feed them, but just on either side of the fence the six o'clock milk bottles um, and I'll keep it that like that that you know once he joins the herd that they can share the same uh, you know milk bottle times he will definitely have more milk bottle times but I think for Kanisa's sake it will do her well you know to ease off and kind of hand over that he's then the baby um, you know you must also think about her side that Oh, you don't want her to become jealous and, um, you know, kind of a, a bad uh, behavior. I don't think she will, but, you know, she's also still young and we need to um, ease them into that process of kind of accepting this little one as then the, the new baby. So far, she's okay um, with that. She did want to return with me to the orphanage, but unfortunately she can't. But, um, I mean, she's taller than me. She's actually huge, if I compare the two of them. But, oh, she's got a beautiful soul. Um, and, yeah, so Timmy and Pisa, Timisa and Pisa also uh, kind of met him. Kumbura, and then, of course, Jabalani. He's always my first entry. He's just such a... Um, a solid elephant um, it's just amazing and hopefully Pabini can also have such a huge influence in new babies lives in the future um, yeah so just watch the channel I will give all my you know my um, videos that I've done uh, I'll will upload that once I'm, um have better access to Wi-Fi I'll upload that so yeah, have a look and enjoy, um, and yeah, uh, be blessed. Look after yourself, and yeah, thank you so much for yeah for joining us. Um, and if there's any questions, yeah, shoot it through. I will answer through the social media uh, team, whatever they ask me, answer that. But once again, thank you. Thanks, yeah, for for loving elephants um, and making a difference in this world really appreciate that yeah. let's quickly I want to see if we can see his little red tongue let's quickly oh sorry oh, uh, you can't really uh, there you go there's a little bit of red see how red it is and I, it was never with Alcanisa like that. Oh, he's blinking. Look at it. Have a wonderful day, evening, wherever you are in the world and yo, be blessed and remember tomorrow it's Giving Tuesday and for Global Giving, we'll share the link as well with you. And take care.